she will be tough for the winner of this match as they step onto the court live here at, at the National Tennis Center. Mary Jo Fernandez on the left. There is Gabriela Sabatini, the number five seed from Argentina. She has made many fans in her appearances here. Mary Jo uh, perhaps less well known, at least in the U.S. Open context, but she has fought her way very competitively into the semifinals and is a very confident young lady knowing that she has a 500 record in previous professional match play against Gabriela Sabatini. So that match is upcoming and is the men's doubles match that it's quite breezy on the court and I'm sure that Mary and Pat and Tony will be commenting about what effect that may have on the match between these two ladies because it was a factor in the men's doubles match but on the other side it is uh, sunny and it looks like we're not going to have a rain problem we will be back from uh, the intensity it had during the men's doubles match so that's our picture as we are about ready to begin our lady semi-final the final between Mary Jo Fernandez and Gabriella Sabatini. Let's go to Pat, Tony, and Mary upstairs. All right, Tim, thank you very much. And let's turn to Tony first and ask his opinion of Sabatini. What kind of chance she might have against Grau? Well, first of all, she's got to worry about uh, Fernandez. And she's been playing extremely well. Uh, she's confident. She feels stronger. She's a very talented gal, runs extremely well. I think her serve is a little suspect. I'm not so sure that Fernandez can take advantage of it, but I think Graf can. But she has to worry about Mary Jo Fernandez, who's very, very steady off the ground. And now let's turn to Mary Carrillo and your opinion of Mary Jo Fernandez. I think she's really good, and I think she's got a very good chance to beat Gabriela Sabatini. As Tony mentioned, uh, Sabatini hits a, a you know, vicious topspin off both sides. She's very tough off the ground, but she's been broken on, an awful lot. She's been trying to change her serve, and I, I'm just not convinced that she's changed it for the better. Mary Jo Fernandez is much more a complete player than we've ever seen her. As she's, you know, she's still just a kid, only 18 years old, and uh, now that she's gotten a little bit stronger, a little bit taller, her serve is good, her volleys have improved, her return of serve is always very steady. She's not only consistent, but she's a very good thinker on the court. And uh, as we know, she's five and five against Sabatini, so Sabatini fears her, does, is not comfortable playing her. And Tony, you just uh, were down on the court for that ceremony, the presentation. What's the wind doing on court? Well, I asked Paul Anacone what the conditions were like. First, I said, how do you see down here with the crowds when the ball gets a little higher? He said, we see okay. But he said, you know, it's hard to play with this sort of disinterested crowd until you get into four on the fifth or something, which they didn't get to. But he said the wind was very, very gusty and made it very difficult. He said it was harder for us to serve well, though they served well, and we had difficulty returning. So, in effect, the, the biggest enemy to a tennis player, wind, had something to do with the, with the play of all four players out there. So it's a women's semifinal, Sabatini's road, Tony. Well, uh, you can see she's cruised along pretty well, uh, a 7-6, seven, 6-4 six, six, against Meski, and that was a tough match. That was a, a long, hard struggle, but that was good for her to get her into the semis. It, it made her toughen up just a little bit. And her opponent, Mary Jo Fernandez. She's still the youngest player to ever win a first-round match here. She was 14 and change. Of course, Jennifer Capriotti was too, but Mary Jo was a couple of months younger when she did it. You can see how she's done. She had, a, she had through the fourth round, had it pretty easy, beat Judith Wiesner. And then Man Manuela Maleva, that was a good win for her. After dropping that middle set, she came through easily in the third. So that's coming up. Sabatini against Mary Jo Fernandez. Hey, women's tennis has gotten such good depth now. I think it's terrific. It's very exciting. Not a very auspicious beginning. Double fault. Love 15. Not just a double fault, Pat, but it was, there's no forward thrust in that second serve at all, just all spin. That's the kind that's very light and will just sit up for you. Head to head. Five, five between these two. Sabatini's won the last couple, but one of them was a default. Mary Jo had to default, so the record's somewhat uh, faulty. Oh. 
Mary Jo Fernandez yeah, had pulled her hamstrings against Sabatini in that one, the Slims of Florida. That's, and in fact, that was the only title that Gabriella Sabatini has won in all of 1990. She's had so many injuries. In fact, she's had to pull out of three of the last six tournaments in which she's entered. Wimbledon was one of them she couldn't play. Wasn't it because of a bad knee? 15, 40. She's had a bad knee this year. She's had a bad back. She's had shoulder problems, hamstring problems. It's a pity that she gets so injured because her results would be even more, even that much more impressive. Two but already points. she's got a break point. In oh, Gabriela Sabatini's last match against Leila Meski, she was broken six times. And the thing is, that she's been working on her serve and volley and her running more, almost more than anything else. But she's really changed this serve and I, I think it's just too busted up these days. is a good athlete. She's got great natural power, but she really doesn't use it on any of her strokes. Well, because she brushes the ball so much. You know, she doesn't drive through the ball. She sort of come up the back of the ball, and that way you get a lot of spin, but not much speed. First game, and we're deuce. out and another break Fernandez. point for Mary Jo Fernandez who by comparison has a much cleaner game she's very well taught she hits him hard and flat here's a look at the Sabatini serve see the rack is still down while the ball's going up in the air that takes time away from her the left hand is in front of her across her chest when she hits that means she doesn't rotate the body very well set. done for Mary Jo Fernandez. The drop volley by Sabatini hit on the, on the service line. When Sabatini comes in here, her backhand volley, watch where the ball lands after she's trying to just drop it over the net. Watch where it hits. It's high, lands on the service line. Fernandez has her choice. You can see Sabatini was looking, trying to go cross court. We've seen how many times these two have played as pros. They played all through the juniors as well, which means that Mary Jo is very used to all the excessive topspin. Of the four semifinalists on the women's side, Fernandez has been broken the least. 30, love. Just five times in five matches. So that's bad news for Sabatini, who's been getting busted all over the place. Not only because she has a pretty good serve, but she returns serve well and she rallies well. So once the ball's in play, she has his good solid ground strokes. Oh. 40, love. Here's a look at the Fernandez serve. A nice smooth takeaway. Both hands go up together. The ball's tossed into the court. She's fully extended. Good wrist snap. See where that racket finishes around the left side. So it's a very good service motion. Dane Fernandez, Billy Sulaw. That's well done. There's another look at well done. 
after the overhead. She gets back into a good volleying position and cuts off this cross court. That was a good solid four in volley. Watch the mechanics here. Out in front, short stroke. No big long follow through. No big takeaway. Very, very nicely done. So Sabatini at love two, first set. mentioned that Fernandez has been injured quite a bit but she's been able to get back more quickly than, than some people thought because she did a lot of work off the court mm -hmm. worked in the parts of the body that weren't hurt so she could be fit she looks very trim and trimmer and I've seen her so for that matter does Gabriella Sabatini for the last couple of years she'd had a big weight uh, strength trainer with her on the road and I think all of us felt that she'd gotten too big and it had slowed down her footwork. She was carrying around a lot of upper body excess, it seemed, in the leg as well. So she's, she's leaned, trimmed down quite a bit. We just showed you the grip. Mary Jo Fernandez on the return of serve. There's a close-up. She's ready to do the two-hander if it goes to the backhand and the one-hander if it comes to the forehand. Forty, love. She did everything but make the volley, and that I think was a little bit too long a motion on that backhand. Fred Stolle used to work a lot with Mary Jo he down. Still does every yeah. now and then. And uh, he's a bright tennis mind, and just as long as she doesn't copy his forehand, she'll be fine. <laughs> Game seventeen. Game seventeen. Fernandez leads two games to one. First. Gullickson is Mary Jo's coach, has been for a while. He also coaches Aaron Crickstein. He's got a twin brother, Tom, who coaches, among others, Jennifer Capriotti. She is a well-taught player. Fernandez set up beautifully on this overhead. She backs away from it. We'll try to give it to you another time, but I think we better back away from it. <laughs> <laughs> she really set up nicely and slid right into it. Forty, love. Her serves are she connects well and, and she moves them all about the box. That one was about 85 miles an hour. That's pretty much where all of hers go, it seems. Stays in that nice high range and good consistency, too. That one missed, but that was 84. That's remarkable how, how true she stays to that speed. Forty fifteen. Forty thirty. Forty thirty. Game 
Fernandez. Next Sunday, the NFL gets underway for real. Starts at 12.30 Eastern time. It's just day after tomorrow. The Rams will, at Green Bay is what most of you will see, but there are other headline games as well. Phoenix and the Redskins. And, of course, it all begins with the NFL today at 12.30. Total new cast, total new look. Watch the quick hands by Fernandez at the net. It seems she's out of this point right here. She waits, then goes to her right and gets it back one more time. But Sabatini was there to handle it. In these kind of conditions, blustery, the ball that's hit softly can be blown around a lot. And sometimes you think, boy, how can they miss an easy one like that? But sometimes they're more difficult than the one that's been hit hard, which goes right through the air and stays on line. Sabatini also sets up well, gets the weight into that overhead. She wasn't sure whether to let that one go or not. Now she realizes she's put Fernandez in trouble and finishes it with that top spin backhand. point and it was on a friendly let cord that she got in the middle of the rally 40 30 kept her in finally ending it off the smash second of the match and once again her serve is being challenged. Sabatini from Argentina. Mirajo Fernandez was born in the Dominican Republic, but she's an American living in Miami. 
a lot of fan support for both these players. Sabatini says this is why it's her favorite tournament here. She feels the Latin fans behind her. She's done better in this tournament than in any of the, of the Grand Slams. One final, a couple of semis. Oh, big return from Mary Jo. That second serve of Sabatini's. Time and again will sit up for her opponents. Mary Jo had so much time she was able to move around, take it on her big forehand. It is Deuce. Fernandez leading three games to one in the first set. National Tennis Center, Flushing Meadow, New York. The winner of this match to play, Steffi Groff, in the final tomorrow. This is awfully hard work. Sabatini. Sabatini working extremely hard. She was smart to come in and take that in the air, and then she picked this one off. Mary Jo, for a moment, thought she might be able to get there and realized she couldn't. Then the, you question, can Sabatini work that hard, and if it goes three sets, that's usually where she gets in trouble with Groff. She ends up running out of gas in the third set. She's a very inefficient player for all of her natural talent. I mean, it says a lot about what a good fighter she is that she continues to do so well, even though she's she's wasting an awful lot of energy. The double has been decided. The South Africans Aldrich and Bitzer. Steffi Groff is waiting and watching this one. See who she plays tomorrow. handle all that top spin. She takes it early and she's tall. You know, she's meeting that ball, not letting it spin all the way out. Pass Sabatini there for another break point opportunity. I think she smelled her sneaking in that time. She sensed that she was coming in, so she went for it down the line and pulled it off. Some players against Sabatini's top spin back off way beyond the baseline, not Mary Jo.
Mary, is it my imagination or do Fernandez ground strokes look quite a bit like Chris's? <laughs> they sure do, don't they? The two-handed backhand and the way she sets up, prepares, and drives through the forehand. <laughs> Sometimes she sort of goes down underneath it. Other times she just strokes right out through it like Chris has done for so many years. She even holds her left hand mm -hmm. a little bit like Chris did. Joe in, a, in an awkward position at the net and look she well it was a little bit earlier in that point but the fact is with all the top swing she puts on the ball she allows Mary Joe back into the point if she just flattened that out more you know she's got to imagine how tough she would be if she could just take all the chains off her game well she's just learned it with all that top spin hadn't she she has more difficulty hitting it somewhat flat no way she can hit it flat completely flat well, she see she spins off she pulls off and is going backwards as she's producing that shot all that top spin negative way to hit the ball if we can tell I don't, from that angle I don't think you can possibly tell here's a better angle except Sabatini's in the way it was close back at deuce again key game for both players Sabatini's already been broken. That's a beauty. Muscled it right past Mary Jo. Still a good play by Fernandez to take that second that, that, serve and just Sabatini. rip it. Here's another look. Watch how hard she hits that forehand. Sabatini set up well there. She gets her weight forward this time. There's a lot of pressure on a server if they know you're gonna they're gonna take your second serve and try to really do something with it. Sabatini <laughs> serving one three. The best shot you're going to have against a tennis player is, is off their second serve most of the time. Watch this one sit up. Fernandez gets around it. And she has a choice of where she wants to try to go with it. Now watch where Mary Jo is. She's inside the court. The ball is going to be high because of the spin on it. Probably land a little short in the tennis court. Fourth break point for Mary Jo Fernandez, continuing to apply the pressure on Sabatini's serve. Thank you. 
Carlos Kiermaier has become Sabatini's coach since the end of the French Open, where she broke up with uh, Angel Jimenez, her coach of three and a half years. Kiermaier has tried to get her quicker about the court. He's been working on her serve. He's been trying to get her to have a little bit more fun out there in the practice sessions. You can see her trying to, he's trying to coach a little too. It looked like he just told her to chip her yep. backhand. <laughs> Caught in the act. Was she looking? are so different aren't they this an economy of motion with Fernandez who strokes right through the ball nicely and the whipping motion of Sabatini particularly on the forehand side is a big distinct difference and in a long match I think physically it's got to be easier on Fernandez for that reason she doesn't expend as much energy on the stroke production That's the thing with Sabatini. I mean, she hasn't even come close to living up to her natural ability. And here she is in the semis of this tournament. You know, she's been top five in the world for the last couple of years. If she ever starts going for it, you know, flattening everything out, getting better mechanics, Don't you she'll think be very dangerous. Like saying the Velas flatten it out. They just learn with those, you know, those big Western drifts, and it's just they're probably not going to change it. 40. 40. You don't think you can change that, Tony? You don't think she can get she can get better? Oh, I think she can get better, but I'm just saying that her stroke production, I think, is pretty much grooved. Uh, if, if she were going to change from all that toss, I think she'd have to change her grips a little bit, modify her grips, not change them, I think, because they're so extreme both ways. You see the way she holds the rack and return a serve. Let's we'll see if we can get you a close-up of her hands. Watch, watch her on the return of serve. Now, she's way over on the backhand side. See? That's a big big almost a western backhand grip Sabatini thought I, she should have had a call back there in the beginning of the rally Jan Ryan, the umpire. Yeah, you know, we talk about the players getting to the semis or the finals. The the uh, officials that officiate these matches, that's big for them in their profession. Oh, Those sure. who are chosen to, to and the privilege. That means she's done an awfully good job to get this far. It's a big honor. Yep, indeed. Mary, I don't know how you feel, but I, I see the most of the major tournaments around the world, and, and I think the officiating is darn good. They're humans. They will make a few mistakes, but... Oh, they're, they're terrific. Yeah, they're awfully good, and I think they're doing a terrific job here, and it's a no-win situation. Totally thankless. Yes, indeed. Nice group of people, too. Oh, they're, 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 they should be commended. I told Marshall Happer, they all ought to get a raise. He didn't <laughs> like that too much. <laughs> He didn't respond, did he? Well, he was standing how tough the, the umpire's job is. They have to keep time, do all these things. I said, why don't you pay him more money then? A double. Deuce. Back at Deuce again. Mary Jo's second double fault.
Fernandez really wants to consolidate this lead now. Get up 5-1 and, and hide. As gusty as it is, I'm surprised they're smashing as well as they're smashing. This is only Gabriella Sabatini's first great point chance. And she did it. My feeling, Tony, is that Sabatini is just so used to her contact point these days. She's used to making contact with the ball, rolling over it, and leaning back. But remember Bjorn Borg, when he first showed up, he had excessive topspin, and he was able to flatten it out. He was able to penetrate more. He was. And he got a lot more depth on the ball. It's doable. And I'd love to see her go that way in the next couple of years. Serving at 2-4. looks like uh, the hands of Mary Jo Fernandez waiting to return serve. She starts with both hands on it in case it comes to her backhand. But that bottom hand is, a, is her forehand grip so that if it goes to her forehand side all she does is release with the left hand she's ready to go. come in from too deep in the court. 15, 30. Didn't have a chance to get into a good volleying position, so she, there were just too many openings for Fernandez. You can tell Fernandez knows how to play yeah. Sabatini. You can oh, tell yeah. these two have played a lot. Well, as you mentioned, uh, she didn't back off that big high topspin ball. She just stayed right behind the baseline, took it on the, on the rise on the way up. Now I expect to see Fernandez. See, she's getting into the alley. She's going to try to step around at a forehand if she can. Well, that was close. A lot of whistles. That was close. Thirty all. Thirty forty. That's a tough smash from just inside the baseline on that defensive lob. chance for Fernandez to get that second break back. Sabatini hasn't had one easy service game. Sabatini. 
She moves well. I see she's just inside the baseline, but she had a good approach. Not a real good first volley, but deep enough. She got over that one quickly. Talked to Ed Fabricus, who's with the USTA, and he said their paid attendance this year is up over last year. That's good news. We well, broke the record last year. Yep. He said the players aren't aren't using up as many tickets. He said you can buy some more tickets inside or use grounds passes. They said we'll take the free grounds passes. Advantage Fernandez. Sabatini gets into a good spot here. And was down nicely. Just just missed it. Wasn't an easy one. Break point Fernandez. was one of Mary Jo's poor swings at the forehand. That was not well produced at all. She might have thought it was going out. It was very close. May have. You know, Pat, at Wimbledon, uh, excuse me, Tony, it, the, Sabatini is, uh, is such a star all over the world. At Wimbledon, the ball boys were taking the towels that she was using and selling them for 10 pounds each. Really? Oh, yeah. She's got perfume marketed she, over in Europe. She sure Gabriella does. Gabriella Sabatini is just opening up here in the States, so... She, she does get a lot of endorsements. She's a, a very pretty young lady. Yeah, but sweaty towels? <laughs> they do a lot of laundry around here. Yannick Noah, in his, in his last match, a match he lost to Becker, used 60 towels. 60. One match. Had him on his legs, dipping him in ice water. Wimbledon ball kids could really get wealthy over yeah. here. Yeah. A lot of need for perfume. Big Sabatini, four three. Mary Joe serving. To our man John Dockery. I'm with uh, Gabriella's coach Carlos Kermit. Carlos, you had some trouble serving in the uh, in the early on. What's the problem? Well, it, she has she has had problems serving. We haven't been able to touch the serve because it's it's very uh, delicate to change anything uh, during in the middle of the season. Uh, she, we've just been able to talk a little bit about it and try to to have it. Uh, um, Getting it in, sometimes pushing, she has to push a little bit more today, especially. If you could speak to her right now and spend a few moments with her, what would you tell her? Well, I think she she has found out what she has to do. She has to do exactly what she's doing right now. Come in, come in as often as she can on, uh, on uh, Mary Jo's forehand, you know, make her move and take charge of the match. She has to take command and, and uh, be aggressive and volley. She, she volleys well and she hit, hits good approaches. She has the perfect game to win. I, I think she's, she's just coming back. Love 30 on Mary Jo's serve. If she breaks, she's going to be even on serves. I'm happy about this. You know what Tony Trebert was talking about a few moments ago about her conditioning. Can she go a long set with a lot of long points? Have you been working on that? Yes, she can. She can. She had a tough match the other day, two and a half hours, and she ran like I've never seen her run. So I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. She can stay here five hours. Thank you very much. Pat, back to you. All right, Doc, thank you. That's good news for her because yeah. that means she's worked hard enough off the court to physically get herself stronger. So if she loses the match, it's based on tennis, not based on the physical aspects. You stay out there five hours, that's pretty good. 
Good Game job to get off the defensive and onto the offense right here when she throws this lob, but now she can come in. And this is not a very good swing by Mary Jo. That's a bad miss. Storm and Norman Selleck, a big fan of Sabatini's and Carlos Kiermaier, happy to see that. Kiermaier for Brazil, the Brazilian number one for many years. It's for all first set now. Two service breaks recovered by Sabatini. <laughs> She's a good fighter, Sabatini. After her last match, she talked about mental toughness. She said, I'm tougher mentally than I used to be. Well, she's been seeing a sports psychologist, Jim Lair. He's very famous in, the, in his field in the world of tennis. He's been trying to get her to be happier off the court, as well as on the court, to show her confidence more. Establish good ritual. So that she doesn't get down on herself. In fact, I, when she was playing Isabel de Mongeau earlier this week, Jim Lair was around with his uh, with his VCR, shooting her not during the points, but in between points, to show it just so he can he can show her afterwards what her posture was like, whether her shoulders were slumped, whether she was giving off you know, positive positive looks or, or negative ones. What a science that's becoming. Yes, yeah, I was going to say, that's a little much for me. You got to be tough, you got to be happy. <laughs> you can't slump. You got three slumpers up here in the booth. <laughs> right. We are live at the USTA's National Tennis Center, the left. stadium court. The women's semifinal, Sabatini against Fernandez. The winner to play, play Groff tomorrow. Four all first set. Sabatini's become more aggressive, but Mary Jo Fernandez has allowed it a bit as well. As you can see, Groff Cruz in the first semifinal. She's missed a couple of uh, key forehands. All Fisher won the Sabatini. men's doubles championship. 5 4 Sabatini now. Fernandez serving to Sabatini at 4-5 in the first. And it's been the Fernandez. There, there gives you an idea how windy is on the court. It's one thing to show you flags at the top of the stadium. But watch that. That's Sabatini's jacket. That thing's been blowing all over the place. Almost blew off the chair a moment ago. So it is, it is really gusty down there. Fernandez wants to stop the rot here. She lost the last four games straight. And her forehands let her down. She just started playing negative tennis, didn't she? Yeah. Uh, allowed Sabatini to become more aggressive, which she did. I mean, this is windy, I think, down there right now as it's been all day. Uh -huh. And that makes it tough for both players. Mary Jo Fernandez's mom, Sylvia. Oh. She's lost her way a bit, hasn't she? Boy, from being 4 1 up and serving. You got to give Sabatini credit. She's changed her style a little bit. Been a little more aggressive, a little more positive. She's been at the net a lot more since she started to turn this thing around. Set point now. Oh, Sabatini's been in the semis the last couple of years. This is the first semifinal for Mary Jo at the U.S. Open. She was a finalist at the Australian before losing to Steffi Groff. She beat Zena Garrison there. As you can see, a lot more traffic than there from Sabatini. Oh, 
Well, you can see the change in game plan. Sabatini is going to commit at all costs now. Yeah. Try to put the pressure on. They recognize that Fernandez is a little bit shaky at the moment. A little fragile. Again, set point. He's really trying to keep his eye contact with Sabatini. Maybe he should take off those dark glasses. That's good. We saw Kiermaier before give her a sign. We heard it. We know now she's trying to come in on everything. But she pays the price because that one just, that approach shot wasn't deep enough. You see Sabatina dance, dancing all over the place. Continuing to apply the pressure, third break point now for Gabriella Sabatini and set point. Look at those flags. It's humming out there yep. right now. It is blowing all over the place. They're really stretched out. There's the, the jacket again. Look at it being blown around. That's right at the court level. That's more important. Sort of looks like a cape now. Sabatini is about to win her fifth straight game. Not yet. Those last couple of forehands should yeah. give Mary Jo a little confidence. She hit these a little better, the previous passing shot, and then this, she sets up nicely, didn't rush it. Watch an ice on good racket preparation. You gotta keep up that racket speed under pressure. You tend to want to guide it a little That's bit. Right. <laughs> oh boy, who doesn't know that? So we call the elbow. You can't make that thing go forward very well. It's a beauty. We can all appreciate this dilemma. Trying to hit your way out of trouble. Mary Jo Fernandez did a nice job there. Like the French call it petit bras, which is short arm. You know, you just can't <laughs> extend that thing forward. Difficult, tough point. Deuce. See Gabriella taking a little extra time. They've been out there one hour. A little dry, <laughs> a little <laughs> cotton.
was a courageous game by Fernandez because she was very, very shaky. And she hit her way out of it. And see, she's got Sabatini on the defensive. This looked like it was going to be a winner. Gabriella's good footwork. Got that one more ball. So that's the situation. Three set points she was able to steer down. And she made good shots, too. Yeah, good did. solid things. Five all. Sabatini survey. Talk about a change in, in game plans. The first five games, Sabatini went to it seven times and won five. The last five games, she's been 28 times and won 17. So she's decided to change her game plan. And it's been working for her. Double fault for Sabatini. 2 play. They don't mess around much either. Not quite as fast as Graf, but nobody is in terms of how you quickly she gets to the next point. Except for Jennifer Capriati. Right. I was going to say. She got her three-ring notebook and her crayons is back to school now. <laughs> What a great start she's had in pro tennis, huh? Ninth grade. Yep. 14 years old, multi-millionaire. Davis Cup team. He's a joy to be around. He has more stories. He has stories about Budge and Vines and all those players. Fernandez serving at 5-6 in the first set. He, he said he thinks that one thing he knows for sure is that they were stronger in his day than they are today because they could play tennis with one hand. They didn't need a two. <laughs> And he could also carry an extra tennis ball. That's uh, logical, I guess. <laughs> Fifteen all. 
You know, the one shot that Mary Jo doesn't seem to be able to hit very well is a forehand cross court with a bit of an angle to it, a little bit of a dip. When she tries to go cross court, it's aiming too deep in the court, so it's easy to volley it. That's how 30, Steffi Groff uses the width of the court better than any other woman, and yeah. I think Andre Agassi on the guys does that. You know, finds the short, the short angles, uses up the short court wide. Well, so if somebody's at the net in the normal volleying position, if you're going to pass them cross court, you can't have that ball aiming towards deep in the corner because it goes right at the person. It's got to be able to land short in the court so it dips quickly. So many people think they have to pass. Hit passing shots that land on the baseline. Just get it by them. Pretty good touch there. Good athleticism, good feel. See how she came down on that ball, imparted backspin, so when it hit on the other side, it didn't go toward her, her opponent, it sort of stopped. Pretty nifty little comeback after facing three set points. Sabatini now has one. Four set points, I should say. Sabatini after being down 4-1. Hour and 10 minutes to get it done. I don't know if we have that last point, but let's watch where Fernando's forehand goes on the passing shot. This Thank one you. goes straight at her. Watch. You see, she was hardly off the center service line. That was exactly the, the shot I was referring to earlier. If she can, if she can get this ball more angled, she'd be much more effective with it. That's the easy part there blocking the open court. Good fight by Sabatini. 1-4 down and wins at 7-5. Some clutch touch volleys as well. Helped Gabriella win that first set. That set was <laughs> roughly 15 minutes longer than Groff's match. See how well Sabatini got to that ball. She really moves beautifully. Sabatini is stronger physically and can, in fact, stay there five hours, as her coach says, if necessary. That's a big advantage psychologically to her because she knows she can chase everything. Doesn't have to worry about saving anything. And boy, you get a lot more balls that way. profile on Sabatini. 52% not very good when you're not trying to do much for the first serve. And being challenged on every second serve, only winning half the points. Another big free swing from Mary Jo Fernandez off of a second serve and two break points. This is how she started off the first set, Fernandez. This is what she must do. And if she mixes that shot up, going different directions with it, there's no way Sabatini can look for it coming in one direction. Out. 30, 30, 40. 40. She 
She's a smarter match player than Sabatini, Mary Jo. game of the second set. Final between Sabatini and Fernandez. Sabatini won the first set. Fernandez won the first game of the second set. Let's send you again down to John Dockery. Thank you, Pat. I'm here with David Wheaton. And David, uh, I know you have some interest in this game. Would it be fair to say that uh, you and Mary Jo are friends? You're a fan of hers? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I'm her biggest fan in this box, at least. So, you know, uh, I, think she's, I think she's playing pretty well. Just too bad the first set it got away from her. Well, what about the Open for you? You make it to the finals and the doubles. You were just out in this court a little while ago, quarterfinals and singles. So what's it been like? How would you characterize this Open for you? Well, you know, you, you, don't, like to, you don't like to lose, but I think, uh, you know, I have to, have to realize that I did, you know, did have a good Open this year, and both singles and doubles, and I, I played every day, and, you know, it's just a matter of keeping your concentration for two weeks, and... I think that's what I was most happy with. I really, you know, worked hard for two weeks here. We talked a moment ago about McEnroe Sampras. You were out there with Mac. You know, he's hot. What about him against Sampras? I think I think it's largely going to depend on how Mac plays. I think uh, if you know Mac plays well, he's going to give Sampras a lot of trouble. But I, I think if he doesn't play well, Sampras is playing well enough where he'll, I would expect him to win the match. What about the other semifinal, Becker and Agassi? I think Boris has been moving through the tournament kind of quietly and, uh, you know, as quiet as Boris does, but, you know, I, I think that's a tough one to call. You just never know how, you know, those, those two players are pretty streaky. And uh, it's just going to be who's more pumped up to play that day. Well, congratulations on a good Thank open. Back to you, Pat. All right, John. They're very sweet together, David Wheaton and Mary Jo Fernandez. You see them together at all the Grand Slams. The Lipton tournament, any time the men and the women are together. Those two are. They're very much the same, very quiet, very, very solid people. 40, 30. Fernandez lost her serve three out of the last four games. Prior to this match, she'd only been broken five times in the tournament, so Sabatini's getting to her serve a little bit. Again, this is the forehand that is too high and not angled quite enough. What she might try to do on that is to brush the ball a bit more, go over the top of it a little bit more, and make it dip with the extra top spin. She could use a little Sabatini on that cross court mm -hmm. forehand. Mm -hmm. It'll a little. It's a lot harder to volley up and volley a, a lot of topspin. A lot of passing shots, particularly going cross court, have to land short in the court to be effective. She keeps coming in though, Sabatini. She continues to pressure Fernandez. Not well enough here, though. Came in behind this return, and it was a chip return that wasn't deep enough. Mary Jo had a nice looking swing at it. Always scares me the players fall like that. You just hope they didn't turn an ankle or pull a hamstring or something. <laughs> Abatini serving love, too. There it is. That's the one 
you've been calling exactly. Today. Watch how shooting. she comes up the back of this ball with her racket right here, and this is what makes it roll. See how she whipped over the top of that ball? She came up the back and got over it, made it spin a little faster. <laughs> USTA's National Tennis Center, Flushing Meadow, New York, the women's semifinal. Sabatini and Fernandez, with the winner to play, Steffi Graf, who won earlier today in the final. The losing semifinalists here will take home 87,500. So it's not all in vain. 15, Talking about Steffi Groff, this was earlier today as she rolled over Sanchez Vicario 6-1-6-2. And then in the men's doubles final, Aldrich and Visser of South Africa did straight sets. They were good. Anna Conan Wheaton said, you know, we've only played three tournaments together. He said, we're just catching on and we're, we're uh, going to get better. We're going to play some more together. Game to Fernandez. She leads two games to love in the second set. Tim Ryan at the National Tennis Center, and I'm joined in our studio by the finalist in 1978, Pam Shriver. And welcome, Pam. Nice to have you with us again. Thanks, Tim. I know you've been enjoying this match as much as we have. It's uh, It's been an interesting match because of the style of play in the first set. That's right. I think we were all, a lot of us watching the locker room were very surprised how much Love play was decided up the net, especially Sabatini. And seems like now Mary Jo has gotten a little bit used to Sabatini coming in. Now she's taken a commanding lead in the second in the set. But second. I was surprised that she lost a two-break lead because usually when Mary Jo gets the lead, she, she pulls that away with a set. Do you think Mary Jo herself was surprised at the uh, net rushing strategy of Sabatini? Possibly, but uh, one thing I'm surprised, I think it's going to really uh, hurt Sabatini in the long run, is when she's coming in net, she's, she's not really stinging the ball that much. She's sort of poking at it. Matter of fact, I've seen some sliced forehand return of serves look a little like mine sometimes when they don't go too well. Yours were pretty good, Pam. Well, uh, anyway, she's going to really need to gamble a little bit more because Mary Jo's going to hit the passing shots uh, much better, I think. What uh, about Mary Jo Fernandez in terms of uh, this caliber of play that she has displayed through the tournament? She's coming off injury. She's certainly less well known to the world audience than Sabatini, but you know her well. Well, last year we played the doubles here, and we were a pickup team at the last moment, got through to the finals, and she's just a very mature player. She's only 19 years old, but she's been a tour veteran now for a couple of years. She got through to the finals of the Australian Open, and she's going to be a force for years to come. Obviously, her main problem this year has been physical, but uh, this is a, a great opportunity for both players. You know, without Martina being here or Salas, those are the two players that everyone thought would get through to the semifinals. Talk what you've seen in this match, and having watched uh, Graf demolish Arancha earlier, uh, how do you feel about the, the final? Well, I would say when uh, Steffi Graf gets rolling, that it's going to take someone playing an extraordinary match in the finals to beat her. Uh, both players would have a chance, but uh, you know you have to bet most of your money on Graf for the final. But uh, Sabatini has beaten her before. And also, if it's a very, very windy day in the finals, that could put Groff off a little bit. Uh, but I think both players um, you know, are going to be pretty tight in this match. This is a huge opportunity for both. Sabatini's had a disappointing year. Last Grand Slam tournament of 1990. Sabatini with a chance to get back into this set here. We played game by Mary Jo, whether the wind is a factor or not, our commentators at top will tell us, but uh, Sabatini's back in it. Now, fans want to know about Pam Shriver. Uh, what are you up to? Well, I had shoulder surgery three months ago tomorrow, and uh, I'm really hoping to make a comeback. And actually, this has been a great year to be a veteran player on the sidelines, to watch Gomez win the French Open and Martina win Wimbledon, see McEnroe do well here. 
So I'd really like to make 1991 a, a comeback year. I think I have one more good push in me, but it's not getting any easier, Tim. Uh, well, that's great to hear that, though. I know fans would be pleased to see you back in action. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Let's go back upstairs to Pat, Tony, and Mary. All right. Thank you, Tim. And Pam. Classy lady. The female. Abitini won the first set 7-5. Pam Shriver and Mary Jo Fernandez lost the, uh, the U.S. Open doubles title to Hanna Monlikova and Martina Navratilova last year. That was pretty emotional, too. Sure was. Martina and Pam had just recently split up. 30 love. Well, they'd won the Grand Slam of doubles and had 1984, won right. so many tournaments and were so successful. I'd love to see Pam Shriver make one more real concerted push. The first Grand Slam final she was ever in, this one, 78, was the only one she'd ever gotten to in all those other years. Then she can start working on being president. <laughs> That's right. That's where <laughs> she's got, heading. Got the connections. Look out. I'd be surprised as Pam... 30-15. ...is as well to see Mary Jo squander another early set lead. Again, there's that slice volley that sits up, gives Mary Jo plenty of time to punish it. Well, Mary Jo had two service breaks in this set, has lost one back. Same as the first set. She had two. Yeah. In that first set, she had a point to take a 5-1 lead. And it got away, and the whole set finally got away from her. I've always felt that you can get into the quarterfinals of a big event by counterpunching and slashing and charging and dipping and, and just sort of, you know, reacting. But once you get to the semis, you got to start making, you have to make, make things, happen, yeah, you've got to be the aggressor. You can't just sort of run around and, and counterpunch and, you know, and hope for an upset that way. Plenty happen that way, but not usually in the semis. You better start dictating. Like that, that is why. Dave Sabatini. Hernandez, Hernandez leads 3-2. leads 3-2 in the second set. Super Saturday coming up tomorrow. Championship weekend here on CBS. The men's semifinals, the women's final. It all begins tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Becker and Agassi will be first. Winner of this match will then take on Steffi Groff in the women's final. And then how about this one to finish the day off? Sampras against McEnroe. That's tomorrow on Super Saturday. Got a bunch of Americans in there. It's nice. Three out of the four. The men's bracket. Anticipation, good hands by Sabatini. 15 love. We see this forehand volley that finally wins it. She doesn't take any motion at all. She just sticks it out there and blocks the ball right here. See, very little motion. Fernandez is so close to her, she had no reaction time at all. Those are her pet volleys, Sabatini. Yep. She likes the ones that just die over the net. 30 and that's where doubles helps you because that kind of thing, those quick exchanges. Though Gabrielle is no longer playing with Steffi Groff, they were a pretty successful doubles team, won Wimbledon a couple of years ago.
Caney. Hernandez leads 4-3 in the second set. That guy had a firm wrist on his shots. Did he? Lucky team. Another forehand that looked just a little too tight for Mary Jo Fernandez. When she starts to try to loop it more, she seems to be less effective, and it's an indication she is getting a little tense, I think. Left. Or third. She hits her forehand better into the backhand corner of, of Sabatini, so that might be the place for her to try to do it because it's her best shot, it's her most natural shot. might want to do this more because Sabatini has really dominated the net area the last set and a half. Of the 17 winners Sabatini's hit, 15 of them have come from the net. So you get in there and keep sure. her from getting in. Get in there. 15 all. Here she comes again. Joe was looking for that uh, that little feather volley of Sabatini's. It's partially because 30, of the way 18. she grips the racket. She likes to undercut the, her volleys. Mary Joe read it well. Been in twice as much and won about twice as much. going to be attacked. Sure. 40, you know, part of, of uh, percentage tennis is to do what you do best the majority of the time. And, and when you get a little nervous or things get tight, why not go with what you do best? You have the best chance of making that shot. At least they have to try to beat you. is up 4-3 in the second set. Sabatini won the first set. She was up 3-love. Two breaks. Carlos Kiermaier likes what he yeah. sees. Sabatini's coach. Pretty good player in his own right. He was ranked as high as about 40 in the world back in 1981. Had a topspin forehand, kind of a, an effective chip backhand. Part of a rock band in Brazil called the Flea Bags. They were big. Were they? They had all kinds of hits. <laughs> I don't have any of their records. I stayed in a couple of their hotels. <laughs> Boy, that could have been 5-3 off that forehand. Again, Mary Jo is more the thinker out there. Sabatini is sort of a brawler, more than a boxer. She's got a great heart. That's out again, another forehand. It's interesting they're trying 12. to play. Sorry, Mary, go ahead. I was just going to say that's her 12th forehand, unforced forehand. That's been killing her. Tim Gullickson. Sabatini has been trying to play Mary Jo's forehand, yet these last few points, Mary Jo's run around her back and hit her forehand. Trying to be aggressive, trying to be bold. You expect to see Sabatini chip and charge now, try to 
block the return and come running in. For all. So two sets in a row, Mary Jo's jumped out to a two service break lead and has seen it evaporate. We'll see if she can pull this set out now. Again, when she seems to try to top it a little more it's when she's getting nervous. Nicely constructed, Tony. She pulled Sabatini off the net and just did a, a nice inside out forehand. Got her out of position and then took advantage. Nice, nice one two punch. That also makes her passing shots a little more effective when you throw that offensive lob up there once in a while. Sabatini's been smart. She's been chipping and coming in a lot. She's also been trying to spin a lot of first serves in so that Mary Jo can't step around and just hammer her second serve. But her first serves don't have a lot of pace. That one did. That was the hardest one. That was 84 miles an hour. She's been serving in the 50s and 60s. But Mary Jo's not mentally looking to hurt her off the first serve. It's the second serve that she steps up and tries to do something with it. Great point here for Fernandez. You get the feeling this whole thing is going to be decided by attitude. You know, who's going to pull the trigger? Quiet, please. Well, you know what Sabatini is going to try to do. It's a question of how Mary Jo Fernandez responds. <laughs> Here'll be a good indication to see if she can really hammer this forehand. Fernandez leads 5-4 in the second set. Fernandez leads 5-4. Abicini won the first set. Five. Fernandez serving for the second set. <laughs> no question that Sabatini is the quicker of the two around the court. More athletic. Doesn't mean that Mary Jo doesn't cover court well, but not as naturally and as easily. Neither of these players have done much of that. That's go in behind the opponent. Right, that was a good example when Sabatini came in, the cross court looked open, but when they cover that, then the down the line, the other side is open. And I think if we watch for that, if they do it, it'd probably be pretty successful for them. Wide. 
Just barely. 30 all women's semifinal in the stadium at the USTA's National Tennis Center. The winner to play Steffi Graf in the final tomorrow. for Sabatini to get her even at 5-0 in the second set. Second serve here. She knows Sabatini is going to try to come in behind it. Five ball. Second set. Just can't put her away. We had four service breaks in the first set. Five service breaks and six in this set. Half the half the games have been service breaks. Highly unusual. Fourth double fault. That one was long by five yards. Talked about consistencies. Sabatini has not lost a set to this point. She sure got close the other night with Leila Meski, yeah. the young Soviet. Held her off. Tiebreaker in one of those sets. Soviet Union coming up with more players, aren't they? They sure are. Cherkasov, Chesnikov, Meski, Zvereva. Second knockdown of the day at the net. That can take 15, some skin 30. off, too. She got her hand a little bit. I think she might have gotten that left hand. This is a nice big forehand from Mary Jo. She tried to track it down, Gabriella. Never really got close. Dropped her racket. I think she might have... Yeah, she skinned up with that left hand a bit. Bang. I think her watch came loose. with some skin. Yeah. Fifteen forty. Two break points now. Fernandez leads 
six five in the second set. Good speed coming forward by Fernandez. Let's see what she does with her racket to disguise this. Just bunts it over the net. Sabatini not close. 30 love. He's been to the net 71 times. is her favorite spot for the forehand Final down the line and smartly serve. she Please comes in and one more game. blocks Thank off you. the volley. Did she like it? Final set coming. Sabatini will start it serving. Steffi Graf already in the finals earlier today with a victory over Sanchez, Vicario. So the winner of this will have the task of facing Steffi Graf. Reminder to our station along the line that we'll be staying with this match until its conclusion. We're supposed to be off at the top of the hour, so we'll stay till it's over. Thirty fifteen. Fifteen.
darn good overhead from that deep in the court. It was high. We've mentioned so many times it is gusty out there. Taking a pretty good poke at those serves. There, Joe Fernandez. 40-30. That's what got her the two breaks in both the, the other sets to get her ahead. There have been so many breaks in this match. Six each. Wins the first game of the final set. Final set, the women's semifinal, the National Tennis Center, Sabatini and Fernandez. Sabatini's won the first game of the final set. Sets are one all, obviously. that uh, tonight at 11.30 uh, we'll have highlights of this match, highlights of the earlier match. Highlights of the men's doubles final. M. Ryan and Mary Carrillo will be with you. And then coming up tomorrow, championship weekend. Women's finals, the two men's semifinals. What a lineup tomorrow. 30, 15. fault. Number four for Fernandez. A double fault out of that you know she's moving around a lot waiting on that serve Sabatini dancing around I think it can be a little disconcerting I'm not saying that's why Mary Jo double faulted but it could be when she sees it when she's it she's got a second serve Sabatini she she makes a point of making a lot of movement got her yeah got her pull Fernandez. Watch Sabatini try to close after this volley. She goes closer to the net and down the backhand side. Just too good. Oh. Game Fernandez, one all. One all.
the offensive lob is there for Fernandez if she can make it. This is an awfully tough day to be really accurate with it because it's so gusty and the wind swirls. Spring of 1989, Sabatini beat Chris Everett and Steffi Groff in the finals of back-to-back -back tournaments. Really felt like she was going to challenge for number one. And then she beat Arancha Sanchez to win the Italian Open. Oh! Then she had 30, some real 15. disappointment. She had a real tough three-setter with Steffi Groff in the semis of the Open. Boy, I remember that match. She just ran out of gas at the end. And in 1990, she had a really unfortunate ankle injury at the Australian Open. She had to withdraw. that one had a lot of work on that top spin backhand lob and Mary Jo knew it was just an unplayable lob again the slice is what gets Mary Jo forward but Fernandez gets caught because now she rolls over it on the very next backhand and Sabatini Sabatini wins and leads 2-1 in the final set. Sabatini leads two. Semifinals, Sabatini and Fernandez. Mary Jo. Sabatini leading 2-1. In the final set. This is the first set, the only set that they started out on serve, holding their mm -hmm. serves. Fernandez jumped out ahead in both the first and second sets. Oh! 30 love. Again, to remind our station along the line that we will stay until the conclusion of this match. Sabatini this year has won only one title, Virginia Slims of Boca. It's where she beat Capriati in Jennifer's pro debut. She wants this so badly. Oh! It's Monica Sellis, who won the French Open this year, has scooted ahead of her in the rankings. Zimi Garrison has had a big year. Oh, she wants to get back to where she was these last few years. Turn back the young tide to players. Yeah. I laugh because she's 20. That's yeah, right. turn back the tide to young players. <laughs> I tell you, I'm, I'm real happy that Capriati didn't win against Steffi Groff on Monday. I don't think it would have been I don't think it's good for the game to have a 14-year-old champion like that. And I don't think it's good for a 14-year-old to have all that pressure. Oh! It sure is nice to have Jennifer Capriati around this game. She's got the happiest eyes on the tour. Bad miss there. That missed outside the doubles alley. Break time, Gabby. You know, Mary Jo must sense I mean, what a what big opportunity she's had. 
you know, to get into her second Grand Slam final of the year. Big occasion for her. point and a strange time for Sabatini to come in from so deep watch where she is when she decides Advantage to come in Fernandez. behind the baseline chips a backhand gets it somewhat deep but see she's still behind the service line there's no way she can get into a volleying position and perhaps she lost a little patience finally after having hit that many balls so I got to end this thing somehow She's got to learn how to be more purposeful, Sabatini. How to end points a lot quicker, how to choose her shots a lot wiser. Fernandez has the advantage. That sends you again back down to John Dockery. I'm with Sylvia Fernandez, Mary Jo's most. How in the world do you handle this kind of pressure? It's very hard to handle, but we have to manage. That's, this is tennis. You know your daughter better than any of us. What do you think about her right now? Is she conf confident and comfortable? Well, she's holding in there. Uh, this is, as I was telling you, her second tournament after being injured in Wimbledon. So let's see how she does. Well, thank you. Good uh -huh. luck. Back thank to you, you, Pat. Very nice. She's a lovely woman. She's been so worried this year that her kid keeps getting hurt. When she hurt her back in Berlin, it really spasmed on her, froze her, and uh, her mom wanted her to come home, but she didn't. She relaxed, she played the French, lost to Capriati in the quarters, but had to skip Wimbledon. They're a very, uh, very close, very religious family. What's interesting is she points out that she's only played two tournaments in Wim since Wimbledon. That's not a lot of tennis no. either. Well, she's had to pull out of a bunch as well. She's had two MRIs, those magnetic readings they do. She's had them for her knees lately. Bad knee to tip her out of Wimbledon. She's like my mom, Sylvia Fernandez. She says a lot of novenas. <laughs> Fifteen thirty. Fifteen thirty. We're live at the stadium of the USTA's National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadow, New York. Women's semifinal final set Sabatini and Fernandez. Pat Summerall with Mary Carrillo and Tony Traber. <laughs> Earlier today, Effie Groff moved into the women's final. 30 all. Straight sets over Sanchez Vicario, 6 1 6 2. Doubles championship won by Aldrich and Visser of South Africa, men's doubles champions. 30 all here, 2-2 two -two in the final set.
to our stations along the line that will be staying with this match until its conclusion. A lot of hard work by both players, but Sabatini putting everything to all of her strokes. Good job by Fernandez to get there. Couldn't do anything with it. And a very graceful Sabatini just steps out to pick off the backhand volley. All you say at that point is don't just don't miss it. And I got the wide open court. Fernandez has lost a lot of length on her strokes. Sabatini takes a 3-2 lead in the final set. Sampras against McEnroe. Pretty good lineup. This isn't bad right here. No. I'll say. 2-3 in the third set. Loser goes home with 87,500. The winner goes <laughs> into the final against Groff. Seventy thousand bucks sounds like more fun than facing Groff to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's the breakdown. Eighty-three thousand dollars. If you win this and get into the final, even if you lose there, there's a lot riding on this besides pride. just two kids out here to think about it yeah 20 and 19 and this kind of pressure all these people television all the money at stake they handle it so well She is dancing around again. Mm -hmm. That can be tough when you're throwing that ball up. She got over that one a little bit better. It landed inside the service court, which has been tough to volley. 40, 30. Mary Jo gets over the forehand. See, again, this is a deep position to come in from on the baseline. She rolls over that. See where it lands inside the service court? That means the ball gets down quickly and harder to volley. Does, does Mary Jo serve and volley much at all? I mean, just come in behind her serve? She can, I, as, I, as I said in the beginning, she's, with age, you know, she's improved every department of her game, especially her serve and her volley. But will it's, she? It's still not, I, I don't imagine her doing it much now. She knows what to do with the short ball, as she just showed us. If you give up the short ball against Mary Jo, she knows what to do with it. But I still think she likes her chances a lot better on that baseline. She likes targets. 
She doesn't like being a target quite as much. Yep. It says something about her baseline game that the baseliner she's playing is coming to knit. Abandoning her own instincts. Sabatini really thinks she got hooked on this. I can hear her say it was on the line. It looked pretty good. But I don't know, Mary Jo immediately made it seem as though it was in fact wide. Jan Ryan, the umpire, didn't jump in to, to change the call. It's on her side of the court. That looked like it hit right on the line there, didn't it? It did. But it's three all, nevertheless. Replays in tennis are so seldom conclusive. Yeah, right. It's just unbelievable. Well, you know, you just baseball can't tell. replays, you see them. I mean, you see it beautifully. Sabatini has gone so much to the Fernandez forehand on her approaches. I really think she's got to mix it up because Mary Jo is just sitting there now parking herself on her forehand side. She didn't hit that one real cleanly, but there was enough room there anyway, and she made it. Yeah, you can, you can play a weakness into a strength if you play it too much. Thing is, Fernandez has had an awful lot of winners off that forehand side today. Total points giving indication just how close this thing is. To me, this is a stage of the match where if you can get into the net on something reasonable, you got a pretty good chance because the other person has to then beat you. And there, Mary Jo didn't make much of a swing at the ball at all, trying to get that lob up in the air. Sabatini's not fighting this one. She's just disappointed that this, this forehand sailed long. The fans got into it. Well, this is a stage in the match where the fans, are again, are pulling their heart. Whoever they went to win, they think they're getting a bad calls. That's gone. Advantage Sabatini. Two hours and 34 minutes. Oh. Game to 
Sabatini. And we'll be back at the U.S. Open in just a moment. Sabatini up 4-3 in the final set of this semifinal to see who plays Steffi Groff tomorrow. those breaks in the first two sets they haven't had a break point in this set so things have tightened up on sir oh, Mary Jo Fernandez 19 years old from Miami Sabatini in the far court just 20 years old. That's Mary Jo Fernandez. Joe didn't know how 15, to play this 40. one when it came back. One attempt at the passing shot. Now she starts to come in, thinks she's going to get it in the air. She ends up making a sort of a weak half volley. And that's all she wrote. 1540. Big points here, obviously. Got too big a hurry. Still break point. You think she wanted that one? <laughs> It was not a nervous swing. She went after it. She gets across, sets up well, and really goes after it. <laughs> so two break points saved by Fernandez. I don't know if it was that serious or not. I just hit on the paint. Third break point in this game for Sabatini. Look out here because you know Gabrielle is going to be chipping and charging, trying to get to the net. Thank you. 
There's another look. Boy, that's a courageous, dangerous shot. The only break in this third set goes to Sabatini, and she's serving for the match. Up 5-3. Terrific match. That's a pretty gutsy shot. Marvelous to be able to make yourself take a swing at a ball like that. They've both done it terrifically in this last set. <laughs> Sabatini's discovered the drop volley. It can be dangerous, but it's worked for her recently. Mary Jo takes about three strides toward it, realizes there's no way she's going to get there. 30 15. for this one. I think Fernandez sees her go down, thinks she had no chance. That shades of Becker a couple years ago. Piermeyer and the Black Hat are coach. And it's now two match points. you would hope to have in the semifinals of the U.S. Open. A disappointed Mary Jo Fernandez should certainly hold her head high. She played a wonderful match. So here at the National Tennis Center, Sabatini has defeated Fernandez 7-5, 5-7, 6-3.